Okay, um, for many years I taught English as a second language to university students. And one of the things I was asked to talk about here today is how reading in English can help young people's language skills. Reading is, of course, a vital component of the immersion method of language study. And here are a few suggestions for how to help young people become good readers and improve their English. Number one, model reading for your child. If your child grows up seeing you read books every day, they are much more likely to think of books in a positive light. Number two, very important, read with your child. There are so many ways to do this. When they are very young, of course, reading aloud to them is so important. I started reading to my son when he was one week old. Don't just read the words, talk about the pictures. Ask questions. I have a picture book called Bibimbap, and there is a drawing of a dog on almost every page. The dog is not mentioned in the words, but he is a funny and important part of the story. So you can ask things like, what is the dog doing here? You can talk about things that are not in the words. As your children get older, you can take turns reading. The child can read a page, and then you can read a page. Often people say to me, I think my English is not good enough to read aloud with my child. I don't think that's a bad thing for them to see. I think, you know, that the, the fact that you are also trying to learn and improve your English is a good thing for them to see. Again, this is reading not as a duty or as an assignment, but something fun to do together. This means, of course, choosing books they are interested in, not just for their school assignments. If you make reading together a regular part of your daily or weekly routine, children will come to expect it and look forward to it. And you don't have to stop when they're old enough to read themselves. Would you stop watching television with your child just because they're old enough to change the channel themselves? I can remember the last book I read aloud to my children. It was the first book of the Harry Potter series. My son was 16 years old. My daughter was 13. I read that book aloud to them every night during their winter holiday, Christmas vacation. And we all have very fond memories of that time every night reading the first Harry Potter book together. Another thing you can try that works very well for many young readers is to read the book with the book on tape. So you purchase the book on tape with a native speaker reading the English, and the child reads the book together with the person reading the book on tape. Many times this enables the child to make the leap into reading more English on their own. Try to see that your children have access to a wide variety of books. Whatever they're interested in, there are sure to be books about that subject available. Whether it's cars, or soccer, or fashion, or music, or martial arts, there are very good books somewhere that have been written on the subject. Help your child find them. Like anything else about being a good parent, this takes a lot of time but it is a very good use of a parent's time in terms of what your child will gain. If your child already likes to read, and that's probably everybody here, um, here's one thing you can try to help their English skills. You can try getting the book in both languages. They can read the book in Korean first, and then, once they know the story, reading the English version will be easier for them. This will not work with all children. Many of them will want to read only the Korean version. But for some students, it is a very effective way to help them become immersed in English. For more information about how to share books with your children, I have two recommendations. I hope this is the next slide. Okay. Uh, no, sorry, that's a single shard. 
which is <laughs> well, which I'm going to talk about shortly. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, forward again. Oh, this is the Korean cover of A Single Shard. And, oh, here we go. So these two books, one is called Reading Magic. I guess that's this one. <laughs> Reading Magic by Mem Fox, who is an Australian, and The Read Aloud Handbook by Jim Trelease. Both of these authors also have very helpful websites. So that's the next slide. And these are, these are two excellent resources for helping your uh, child become a better reader, no matter what age they are. In my opinion, helping children become good readers matters more today than ever. We have moved with almost unbelievable speed into an age where our communication is measured in the number of characters we can type, rather than in the depth of our thought. Books are just about the only place left where young people can encounter written language with the luxury of time. Now, I'm not in a hurry to answer something. Language that will encourage them to ponder and wonder and dream and imagine. The right word, the striking image, the perfect metaphor. The age-old universal stories expressed in brand new ways. I don't wish to rely on tweets and uh, text messages to develop the next generation's relationship with written language. You never love a book the way you do when you're a child. And even in this age of the tweet, that kind of love still exists. I was at an event in Washington, D.C., and a boy named Daniel stood in a long line in the hot sun waiting for me to sign his book. When he reached the table, he gave me a copy of a single shard. It was in very bad shape, tattered, broken, pages bent. And he said, I was trying to keep track of how many times I read this book so I could tell you when I met you, but I lost count after 62 times. He had read my book 62 times. <laughs> and that is why it matters. Daniel is an inspiration to me every time I sit down to write. I think about him and I try to make every single sentence I write worth reading at least 62 times. At another event, a woman came up to my table and started talking to me about her son, whose name was Eric. Eric was there too, but hanging back a little. He was a skater kid. He had baggy shorts and long hair and a cap, and he had a skateboard under his arm. His mother told me that Eric is dyslexic, and he has struggled all his life with reading. He hated to read. He had never once finished a book on his own. And then she gave him one of my books. He read it by himself, and then he read it twice more. When she was telling this story, she started to cry. So then I started to cry. And then poor Eric was standing there wishing he could ride his skateboard very far away. <laughs> then he handed me his book to sign and I was shocked. It was a copy of one of my books called When My Name Was Kyoko. Of all of my books, it is by far the most difficult both because of its subject matter, which is war, and its, its structure, which is two narrators. If you had told me about a young man named Eric who hated to read and asked me to recommend one of my books, that is the last book I would have suggested. So, in addition to books on subjects you know your child is interested in, have all kinds of books available. That's what this mother did. She had all kinds of books available to him because she wasn't sure what would be the one book that would help him. You can read book reviews online. 
talk to librarians and bookstore people. And if you, your child doesn't seem interested in a book you think they would really like, start reading it out loud to them. Sometimes I ask students I meet what they want to be when they grow up, what their dreams and goals are, and then I tell them whatever that dream or goal is, reading good books will help you get there. I am very appreciative of all of you who are here today because your presence demonstrates that you are truly interested in helping your children become creative, imaginative, thoughtful human beings as well as true citizens of the world. I hope you and your children enjoy your journey through books together and thank you again for coming today.